Alright, it's Friday. Probably half of you in police week. Uh, drinking soda, I'm sure. Nobody drinks alcohol in police work. But uh, I'm going to jump on here today because I do get a lot of questions about strip searches and body cavity searches. What's the difference between the two? When can we use them? When can we employ them? And, uh, you know, the easy way to go about this is really read the Attorney General guideline. I'm going to attach a link to this, but I'm going to also talk about a few other things and, and the perception of it and what, you're, what you could expect if you're going to engage in this kind of uh, search. So, what I have in front of me here is the AG guidelines for body cavity and strip search for the state of New Jersey. And uh, the definitions, first it says a strip search is a removal of a re or a rearrangement of clothing to permit visual inspection of a person's A, undergarments, B, buttocks, C, anus, D, genitals, and E, breasts. So if you're moving, removing clothing and it doesn't expose the undergarments, buttocks, anus, genitals, or breasts, it's not a strip search. Taking somebody's jacket off is not a strip search. Taking somebody's shoes off is not a strip search because you're not seeing things that are private to the human body, okay? The following does not co constitute a strip search. Now, specifically, they put in here the removal or rearrangement of clothing reasonably required to render medical treatment or assistance or removal of articles of outer clothing such as coats, ties, belts, or shoelaces or shoes. So uh, there you go. Now, if, if you guys would just take the time to read some of this stuff, you wouldn't have to debate it at muster at midnight. You can just Google this stuff. Body cavity searches, strip searches, AG guidelines. You can read it and we'll quell and calm any kind of uh, disagreements that you may have with the 700 other police officers that you work with that think they know everything. Um, again, I don't perceive to know everything. I, I, I don't want that perception to be. I just read and study this stuff and I've employed it and I know the rules and I've had a lot of cases behind it. So... I'm going to continue on here, but really, once I learned about all this stuff, I mean, it wasn't hard to just follow what the rules, the AG guideline, the AG's office, um, case law, appellate division case law, 2C, Title 39, all this stuff, all this knowledge is then employed to become a very efficient police officer, defunct of any kind of lawsuits, internal affairs, investigations, or complaints that were even sustainable. So I have, you know, I've never had one sustained against me during the course of my duties. Uh, and I, a lot, I made a lot of car stops. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of car stops. I mean, thousands, thousands of motor vehicle stops in the, in the career that I had here in New Jersey. Uh, all right, body cavity search. Here's the rule on that. Don't do them. That's it. Uh, when I, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people in here have taken Larry Holtz's uh, course. He's since then retired. But one of the things he said was, as far as body, body cavity searches, you can read about it, but if they got it up there, let them keep it. So just, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, you're not going to be having people spread. I'm, there's cases that I'm reading. I'm not going to include them on here because they're not necessary. You don't have to read through them. You just need to know. The courts do not, not like police officers, like, lifting people's wieners up and spreading butt cheeks to retrieve things. Um, you know, you can shake. So somebody asked me, oh, he's got it stuff down his pants. Can we shake it out? Like, you got to use your, your, your imagination to that. Yeah, but you can't be exposing things. You know, you gotta be, you're know, you running a fine line there. I'm not telling you not to do your job. Um, you just need to be cognizant of what this report's going to say and how you're going to explain it and what you can and can't do. And you want to work within the uh, confines of the AG guidelines. So um, this, is, this is at a time when you're allowed to do a strip search. Uh, detention or arrest with custodial confinement. Strip search. No exigent circumstances. If you have no exigent circumstances, you can get a search warrant or consent. You got, you got one of the two. So you can ask the person or you can call an AP and try to get a warrant. You know, you have to um, get that. And you must also have uh, be authorized by the officer in charge of the station house. So your shift commander is going to have to agree to it as well. So you need two, you need two prongs of that have to be met. Uh, you need an AP and a judge to approve it and give you the thumbs up on a search warrant. Or you need consent. Mm -hmm. A supervisor to uh, agree with it and approve it. Under exigent circumstances, probable cause will to believe the person is concealing a weapon, contraband, or evidence of a crime, and exigent circumstances preventing obtaining a search warrant or approval of an officer in charge. The guy's got a gun down his nuts and he's reaching for it. Like you can obviously then, you know, go in and get that gun if that's what you think you're dealing with. You don't have to die because you're worried about an AG guideline. You just need to know what it is when you guys aren't that 
that super crazy situation where somebody may be trying to do something. Um, you know, I would say my opinion outside of a weapon or a gun uh, or a knife or some something that's going to harm you. I, I think there's certainly other ways to go back into the subsection uh, A of this, which says, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, subsection A, which is the non-exigent circumstances. It's gotta, I, I would say probably be a weapon. That's just, just my feeling about it. All right, body cavity searches. I'm skipping right past all this. You don't got to do this. Don't even do it. You can read about it if you like. I've never done one. I've never heard of anybody doing one. I wouldn't suggest doing one. And then you can read. I'm going to attach the link. You guys can read and print that six pages. Just print it out. You can read through it, what needs to happen. All right. And then uh, also this is another piece that I thought was interesting. Unless authorized by a search warrant or consent, a strip search should not be conducted if the arrested person will be released without custodial confinement or will soon be released on bail or own recognizance. So something to think about. What are you locking them up for? Is it a DP? Is it a traffic warrant? The guy's got 500 bucks on him and the traffic warrant is 250 And you know he's going to be literally bringing him in to process him. Uh, so things you have to think about. You guys should know this stuff and really get become very fluent with it so you know what you're doing. You don't want to get yourself in trouble. I mean, I'm not going to bring up a certain agency that attended my training, and they told me about how their, their conduct was frequent for strip searching people and, and almost at the line of body cavity searches. And this was five years ago, and I said, look, you guys are going to get in trouble, and I'm not trying to sound like a goober or a dork. Um, I just don't want to see everybody get in trouble and losing their job over silly shit like this. And let me tell you something. Not too long ago, that agency got sued, and they got sued good. So I'm not going to bring it up. It should be too hard to find if you want to find it on Google. And then I'm just going to go into this, and it says, uh, although not mentioned in the statewide guidelines, it is well settled that the direct observation by a police officer of an arrestee defecating, urinating, or changing a sanitary napkin or tampon is considered a search for constitutional purposes and will be treated like a strip search. All right, that's Wilkes versus the Borough of Clayton. That comes out of 1988. And also, De Loretto versus the borough of Oakland. The courts are firm in the position that the arrestees may, be re- I'm sorry, may reasonably expect to defecate, urinate, or change a sanitary napkin or tampons without direct visual observation by law enforcement officers, unless some justification for the intrusion is demonstrated. So, um, be careful, guys. Just be careful. You know, write your stuff. Don't violate it. Don't be, don't be a Stugatz. All right, it's for the guys who aren't from New Jersey. Yeah. You'll Google that, too. You guys have questions? I'm seeing anybody write any questions? Nope, just tells me who's watching. So enjoy your weekend. Maybe I'll be back here tomorrow. I'm going to try to get here. i got to go to a graduation party. And uh, if I don't get too toasty, I'll uh, jump on here and do a video for you guys. You have to want to reach out to me, send me a message, whatever it may be. This is good stuff. I know it's not the most exciting shit in the world, but there's probably a lot of people out there whose questions were answered on when we can do this. Uh, because, guys, I get this call. This is a very frequent call that I get at my fo- on my phone or messages. Hey, call me. We have an issue. So I'm here for you. If you need me, reach out to me. If I don't know it, I won't answer the question. I do not discuss things that I do not know well. Good night. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the subscribe button below. We're going to put a lot of stuff here on YouTube. You don't want to miss any of this stuff. It's all super valuable and can help you do your job better.